Hey Cats, Ed and Mid Soul Bud here. As promised, a part two evaluating lots more brands and their running shoe foams. Some surprising results here. I've got different models from Asics, New Balance, Reebok, and a few others. Looking at the foams from a performance perspective as well as the softness. Is there any real correlation there between the softness and just how great the shoe is? Let's get to it. Welcome back people, which foams work best for me? Part two. If you're enjoying the content on the channel, help us out to spread the good word by hitting that subscribe button, clicking the bell below for notifications, and also giving this video a thumbs up like. Danke schön. We're gonna kick this one off with Reebok. I found their foams to be amongst the most consistent of all of the brands. There seems to be very few different versions. That's kind of like a good thing. If you're buying shoes online, you wanna know what you're gonna get before it arrives. On testing the float ride foam in their pairs, I've come across almost exactly the same result regardless of the different models. Now, some are reasonably new, some have got like a hundred odd miles into them, but float ride foam just seems to carry on doing what it does. On the Shore A scale, I'm getting a softness reading of about 28 across pretty much all of the shoes. That's like the Energy 2, the Energy 3, the Energy 4, the Symmetros 1 and 2, and the bulk of what we get in the Float Ride Energy X. 28 is actually the average score that I got from measuring all the different midsoles in my collection. I find that Float Ride foam to be a really good balance, actually, between sort of cushion and softness, responsiveness. It's reasonably stable as well. I do remember somebody saying that they found it overly sort of squashy in the heel or so i don't find that with the float ride foam perhaps if you're a slightly heavier build the foam will compress a little bit more and spread i think most of the time because i'm a reasonably light guy I just sort of bounce off the surface as with any midsole foam though it's always horses for courses what works best for you and this stuff seems to work really well for me so it's bang on 28 which is kind of the average score across everything I've tested. Now, we do have the Float Ride Plus foam, which is their P-Back style version. I found that to be a little softer, perhaps a little bit more forgiving, but as always with that stuff, it seems like they've got some sort of outer shell to it. It doesn't actually come in as having a softer rating than the Float Ride stuff. I got scores from between about 32 up to about 36 when I tested that out on a pair of the Run Fast 3. And let's not forget that foam just is no way as durable. So it's a bit tough to say whether that foam kind of works better for me than the standard float ride stuff. It's now only really used as a small puck in the front of the Energy Axe. So it looks like they're kind of discontinuing the use of it, which is odd. Moving on to New Balance now. Some interesting findings here in terms of the softness of the foams used and also where they stack up against other manufacturers. Now, when I measured Zoom X from an internal measurement in a pair of the cut up Invincible runs, I noticed that the foam is coated in an outer layer. So the stuff on the external parts of the shoe does seem to be a little bit tougher. I think Nike have done that deliberately really to try and improve the durability. Doesn't really look though as if New Balance are doing the same thing with their fuel cell foam. I have compared my results up against other shoe tubers and I'm getting very similar results here. So I know I'm in the ballpark. I measured the fuel cell TC, remember that shoe? The SC Trainer and the SC Pacer, those all came in around 23 on the short A scale. The Rebel 2 was within one or two marks of that score as well. So I'm getting very consistent results when it comes to fuel cell. Also, some of these shoes have got a whole bunch of miles into them. So you're looking at a very consistent sort of cushion there. The softness is gonna remain the same over lots and lots of miles. The TC was the one that surprised me. I mean, that shoe's like, three years old it's kind of been sat around here in the shoe sanctuary for a long time probably getting warm getting cold again hasn't been used for ages yet the softness was still there i have to say i find fuel cell a little bit too soft for my liking feels like i'm putting in a lot of energy but i'm not really getting an awful lot back in terms of actual impact protection, it's second to none. The RC Elite 2 and the Rebel 2 were just a little bit too squashy for me to run at very high pace. Certainly puts those shoes into perhaps like the half marathon or marathon category for me. I wouldn't want to choose them for like a 5K or a 10K. How about Fresh Foam? I remember doing a video about Fresh Foam, Fresh Foam X. I don't really think that there's a clear two category foam here. I think there's lots of different versions in between perhaps. So I measured shoes across the board from something like the Beacon 3 right up through to the 1080. 
and they all give different measurements on the Shore A scale. None of the recent New Balance non-race shoes have felt all that special to me, I suppose. The SC Trainer's okay, but again, it just feels a little bit like it's all about impact protection and nothing else, which I guess is okay if you're looking at doing long, slow runs, but I'm only doing perhaps one of those a week. I scored fresh foam somewhere between 36 to 42 on the short A scale. The Beacon 3 was amongst the toughest actually of all the shoes that I tested. Well, you know, aside from like the polyurethane midsoles that you get in Jordan models, or at least those early retro models. I can't say that the 1080 for me was ever a very uncomfortable shoe. It was always a cushioned ride, just not one that I found particularly enjoyable or exciting to run in, I suppose. I think the fuel cell models for me are a very odd bunch, really. When you consider the massive stack on the SC Trainer, has the same softness as the SC Pacer. It kind of melts your mind a little bit. Such a drastically different underfoot feel, yet the foam softness is exactly the same. Again, it's a demonstration of where the midsole softness doesn't equal greatness. Now, one brand of shoes that does seem to work for me more often than not is Asics. Loads of variations to examine this time. They've got a whole bunch of different foams. There's Flight Foam, Flight Foam Propel, we've got Flight Foam Blast, we've got Blast Plus, and even Turbo. Where do I start? The Asics Gel Nimbus 25 features the Flight Foam Blast Plus, but this seems different to the stuff that we got in the Nova Blast 3. Now, I've measured the foam on the Nimbus 25 to be around 25 to 33 on that short A scale. It does feel a bit firmer and denser underfoot, certainly, than other implementations of it, though it's nowhere near as firm as Flight Foam Propel, which we had on the Glide Ride 2. That came in at 41 on the scale. That uses the firmer foam to sort of guide the foot, really reinforcing that rocker from the mid to forefoot. Oddly, I found the original Glide Ride to be a little bit softer than that. I don't know whether that's just where I've pummeled it more, perhaps, over the years. I think it's a little bit down to the shape of that midsole material, those cutouts, that like hourglass-like figure in the midsole. Flight Foam Turbo is certainly an interesting one. I don't have the Super Blast to test out or compare up against my pairs of the Metaspeed Sky or Sky Plus. I think that original may have hardened up over time. At 100 miles, the midsole comes in with a score of 30. And the newer Sky Plus that I have, which has got about 66 miles on it, at 27. So there's a slight difference in softness there, not by much. Those are average readings across the midsole there, in as many places as I could possibly find. So maybe that Flight Foam Turbo is hardening up a little bit over time. I remember that original version of the Sky I really used in wet conditions very very bad wet conditions at one point that phone didn't seem to like that too much you know the mileage isn't really that far off i wouldn't expect that much of a change in the foam properties i suppose there's only a few more miles in it measured the softness in the nova blast 3 that came in about 24 on the shore a scale so it does appear that she's using the same foams don't always come in with the same level of softness. That doesn't appear to be the same though in the original version of Flight Foam Blast. The Cumulus 24 comes in with a score of about 27 and the Magic Speed version 1 and the Nova Blast 2 both at 26. I enjoyed both of those shoes perhaps for different reasons so I think that foam worked better in the Magic Speed. So similar scores there for Flight Foam Blast shows perhaps the midsole foams there are a little less nuanced than the plus version i really love flight foam turbo i have to be honest but not so much all of the different variations of the blast plus the original version of flight foam blast felt a little bit too squashy for me where it was utilized in the nova blast original for just standard everyday running was just too much squash there just don't really find that foam great at pace i suppose it was much better implemented in the magic speed original i think the nova blast 3 is a step in the right direction for that shoe it just makes the whole setup really a little bit more versatile and usable just refined the midsole a little bit and lowered the weight again though it's not about super soft foams here for racing actually the one that's slightly firmer feels better to me just a little bit more response there i suppose from it, it doesn't feel like you're just falling into quicksand a few outliers for you next then i've got brooks the ghost 15 with the dna loft 2 material that comes in at about 42 sure a eh? making it one of the harder foams that's a score of about 14 points over the average of 28. 
I found that a more guided shoe though. There's certainly more response to it. I guess if you don't want an overly squashy ride, that's the way to go. The Hyperion Elite 2, which uses the DNA flash foam, as does the Hyperion Tempo, both offered a score of 30, so a certainly more responsive shoe on the chart. I always like that foam for tempo, pace and above. It just feels like it's got something about it. Certainly not the implementation of the upper though, on the Hyperion Elite 2. The tempo was absolutely fantastic. One of you did ask me to test out the bits of scrap Zoom X foam. I was getting a score around about 20 so it is a little bit firmer perhaps than the standard stuff. You've just got to try not to uh, sample the glue while you're doing it. That's pretty much all the major players there aside from Hoka. I haven't really tested out any of their shoes over the last couple of years, so it wouldn't be a fair test, I suppose. You need at least some shoes that have got some freshness about them. I think the Rocket X was probably my favourite shoe there within the brand. Might be worth picking up the Rocket X too. Probably worth a roll of the dice, I suppose. So not one particular brand stands out at all, really. The Vaporfly Next Percent has worked for me. The Alphafly to a lesser degree, but the original version of the Adios Pro and the V2, both were absolute rockets on my feet. The Pro 3, not quite so much. And looking back at the two, that had a sort of dual density midsole almost. The different Light Strike Pro there was quite prevalent, I suppose. And now I think about it, Perhaps that's why it works so well. Do admire the Boston 9 here a little bit. When I tested out Boost, that had a short A score of 21, which is amongst the lowest there. Very, very soft. So remember, when people do describe Boost as being old hat, it's still one of the softest out there. It's just a bit heavier than the others. Amongst the recent shoes, I think the Metaspeed Sky Plus is probably one that calls out to me most. That's the right balance between stack, cushion, and that sort of forgiving feel, yet really responsive. I can run at high pace in that shoe for a long time. Which foams work better? for you people let me know down in the comments hey cats i've changed into some normal attire for the musical interlude today the fantastic sounds of the jungle brothers with i'll house you you better behave beast or i'll house you absolutely loving the jungle brothers stuff back in the day was a real inspiration to a young Ed Bud, actually. I had this really awesome sample keyboard, so I'd record like my cats, uh, maybe a few sounds of like a drum, perhaps my mum like banging on the ceiling, you know, with a broom or something. Jungle Brothers, certainly a bit of an inspiration. Love the housey beats and those sort of synth sounds, very simple sort of rhythms and fantastic, really bow diddly party-like vocals on top. When you think about it, they were really ahead of their time, actually, the Jungle Brothers had a totally different vibe going on to what was actually currently in the charts really pushing the boundaries and that was quite an exciting thing to listen to when you're a young man go and check it out if you've never heard them before our house you by the jungle brothers thanks for tuning in people hope you enjoyed today's video help the channel to continue to grow by hitting that subscribe button and clicking the bell below for notifications also give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies my name is ed bird and i'll be seeing you